Hello and welcome to a new video on cryptography for everybody. In today's video, you will learn how the TriFit cipher works. A few weeks ago, we had already a look at the BiFit cipher, and the TriFit cipher is, you can say, the successor of the BiFit cipher, or an extension of the BiFit cipher. I structured this video into three different parts. In the first part, you will shortly learn about the background of the TriFit cipher. Then we will have a look in detail how this TriFit cipher works and its key space size. And finally, we will do it in Cryptool 2. We will encrypt and decrypt using the TriFit cipher. The TriFit cipher was invented by Felix Marie de la Stelle as an extension of the BiFit cipher. And de la Stelle was a French amateur cryptographer. And as with the last video you can see here, only this black image of de la Stelle, because actually you can't find an image of de la Stelle. And the images that you can find that say this is de la Stelle are actually a different person. So we can only see de la Stelle in this form. De La Stelle also invented the Bifit cipher, which is, you can say, the predecessor of the Trifit cipher, and the Foursquare cipher. On the Bifit cipher, we already had a video on this channel, and on the Foursquare cipher, we will probably have a video. And the Trifit cipher was published in De La Stelle's book Trait Elementaire de Cryptographie, which he wrote in 1901, and which was published after his death in 1902. And the Trifit cipher is a cipher which combines three Polybius squares with transposition and uses fractionation. How this cipher works, we will see now. First, a keyword is used to create a three-letter Polybius squares, for example, using secret keyword. So we have three Polybius squares, square one, square two, and square three. And you write your keyword beginning in the first Polybius square, beginning at position 1, 1. And then you continue writing your keyword into the squares. And of course, you only use each letter once. So the second E in secret we omit, we write here in T. Then the third E in key we omit, and so on. And when you reach the end of your keyword that you have written into the squares, you continue writing the remaining alphabet in the remaining squares. And since we have 3 times 9, which is 27, De La Stelle added a special sign. And this is a hash sign, for instance, here at the end of the last table, or at the end of the alphabet. Of course, when we create randomly these alphabets, or these Polybius squares, then the hash could be at another position. Now that we have our three Polybius squares, let's see how the cipher actually works. The plain text is encrypted using these squares by writing the number of the used square and the coordinates below the plain text. I have an example here. Let's encrypt hello world. We write hello world from left to right, and then we go letter by letter through the plain text and look at our tables. For instance, the letter H. Where is the letter H? The letter H is in the second Polybius square, so we write a 2. And then we look at the coordinates. It's the coordinate 2 and 3, so we write 2 and 3. The E, for instance, is in the first square, because the E is here, so we write 1. And then we have a look at the coordinates 1 and 2, so we write 1 and 2. And we go on and on and on until we have written the three digits below each of our plain text letters. Then the digits are written, and you can say transposed or even fractionated, in a single row. So you write the first row here, then the second row here, and then the third row at the end. And finally, the digits are decrypted using the three squares. How does this work? We use these three digits now for our first ciphertext letter, 2, 1, 2. So we have to look into the second Polybius square, this one here, and we have to get the letter at position 1, 2. 1, 2 is A. Then we take the next three digits, 2, 1, 1. These are 2, 1, 1 here. So we have to 
again use the second Polybius square, and then we have to use the letter at the position 1, 1, which is a D. And we go on and on and on until we have decrypted the intermediate ciphertext to obtain the final ciphertext by decryption. So our final ciphertext would be ADEF hash Z P L V Y. And to decrypt such a text, we would reverse this ordering here. We would go backwards through the algorithm to obtain our plain text again. As I said, the decryption is the reverse process. Now we can ask ourselves what is the key space size of the trifid cipher? And the key space size is 27 factorial, which is about 2 to the power of 93.13. Why is this 27 factorial? We have to have a look at our Polybius squares for that. So we have three Polybius squares, each with nine positions, which are a total of 27 positions. So we have to enter 27 different letters. These are our alphabet letters from A to Z and the hash symbol. For the first position in the first Polybius square, we have 27 possibilities to choose from. For the second position, we have 26. For the third position, we have 25. And we go on and on and on. And in the last position, we only have one. We have to multiply all these possibilities. So 27 multiplied 26, multiplied 25, and so on and so on, multiplied 1. And this is factorial, or in this case, 27 factorial. Now let's have a look at the unicity distance, u. And the unicity distance is the minimum number of letters that we need in a ciphertext, or that the minimum length of a ciphertext that we need that we can obtain a single or unique meaningful decryption. When we go below the unicity distance, you can find different keys that give you different plain texts that all have a meaning. And to compute the unicity distance of the trifid cipher, we have to divide the entropy of the key space, this is H, K, by the redundancy D of the language. The entropy of the key space is the log 2 of the key space size here. So we get the exponent, this is 93.13. And the redundancy d is 3.2 of the English language. When we divide 93.13 by 3.2, we get about 29.1. So you can say that we need a minimum of 30 letters to obtain a meaningful decryption when we perform crypt analysis. And by the way, the encryption that you can do with the trifid cipher can be performed in two different ways. First, you could encrypt the complete plain text in one go. That is what we did on the previous slides. But there's a second method where you divide the plain text into individual blocks of plain text and then you encrypt each of these blocks individually. How this works, you will see in the later part of this video. Now that we know how the trifid cipher works, what is the key space size and unicity distance. Let's encrypt and decrypt using the trifid cipher component, which I newly implemented in Cryptool 2. I'm here now in the start center of Cryptool 2. I use the current nightly build 9430.1. This nightly build already contains the trifid cipher. I'm here now in the start center and I want to show you how you can encrypt and decrypt using the new trifid cipher component. And to do so, I create a new workspace by clicking on this icon here. Then I'm in Cryptool 2, I have an empty workspace, our component view. Let's search for the trifid cipher. And here it is. So we have the trifid cipher here. And since I want to encrypt and decrypt, I already put two trifid cipher components onto the workspace. Since the trifid cipher needs an input text and a keyword, we need a text input, or actually we need two text inputs. This here is now our plain text, text input, and we need a key or a keyword. Keyword. We connect the plain text with the first trifid cipher component so that the, key, that the plain text goes into the component when we execute this workspace. And after that, we want to display. And to display, we need a text output component. 
I want the text output component having the same size. So I say biggest width here with right click and biggest height. And then I name this cipher text. I connect the output of the trifid cipher with the cipher text text output. Now we also need the keyword. So we connect the keyword with the keyword input here. And of course we want also to decrypt. So we connect the, oh, that was wrong. <laughs> we connect the output of the first trifid cipher with the input text input here or input text connector of the second component. Then this component clearly needs the same key. So we also connect this and we want to have decrypted plain text. So we write here decrypted plain text and I just copied this component here with control C and control V. We also connect this and to make it a little nicer, I say, please align top. And here we say align left. Now we have a nice workspace. We need a plain text and you can write uppercase and lowercase. Internally, the trifid cipher component will convert everything to uppercase. Hello world. This is a test of the new trifid cipher component of Cryptool 2. And we have to write to since digits are not part of the alphabet of the component. Then we need a secret keyword. You can also use lowercase letters here. You can use spaces. The component will ignore letters that it doesn't know. And it will also change everything to uppercase. Now let's have a look at the settings here. So the first trifid cipher component is set to encrypt and we have no period enabled. We will do this later. And the second component we have to change to decrypt. Now let's press play and let's see how the component encrypts. So we get our ciphertext here and you can see we have hash signs in the ciphertext. So we could even use hash signs now as um, space symbols, you could say. You can see here in the plain text when I add here the hash symbols, we get also hash symbols here. So this allows us to divide our words in the plain text if we want to. And of course, the, yeah, you already saw that the decryption also works very well. Now let's have a look at the period. And the period means when I enable here the period with this checkbox yet that you can define the period size or length. And a period of five means that the component always takes five letters and then performs the trifid cipher on these then it takes the next five letters and performs again. And as you can see now, I have enabled the period in the first component and disabled it in the second. When we now press play, of course, it's not able to decrypt it correctly since we have to define also to use a period. We use a period of five here again, and now the decryption works again. And you will also see when you change to a wrong um, period, that it is also not able to decrypt our ciphertext. So you have to have, of course, the same key and the same period to be able to decrypt an encrypted ciphertext. Yeah, and this is everything that I wanted to show you in this short video. You now know how the Trifid cipher works, who invented it, and how you can use it in Crypto2. If you did not yet subscribe to this channel, I would be really happy if you do so. This really helps me to grow the channel and to make Crypto2 more popular. Also, I would be really happy if you give me a thumbs up for this video, if you like it. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.